Yeah, I've, um, I've worked all over the world, um, but it was always a priority to see if I could get back on, on a Saturday for a match. Sometimes, depending where in the world, it, it just physically weren't possible if I were in Africa, because you, you really had difficulties getting back. But on one occasion, I was working in um, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico on the Pacific coast. So um, it had got to Wednesday night, and I'd, I'd, I'd finished. So I said, Thursday morning, I need to get back home now. So the girls in the office got on my ca the case for me and um, managed to get me a flight on Thursday evening from Puerto Vallarta to Guadalajara and then from Guadalajara to Mexico City and had a, had a 12 hour wait in, in Mexico City and I can remember in the morning while I'm waiting there it's, it's surrounded with, with hills and volcanoes and there was this weird cloud formation over top of one of the volcanoes and I thought it's strange is that it looks weird it, it just didn't look right anyway I thought nothing about it so after 12 hour stay I jumped on a plane and went to Chicago and as we're landing in Chicago I thought God, that's a strange landscape is that it, it looked like all white and grey and, and as we landed I then realised that we'd got six inch of snow in Chicago and I've got my shorts on and my T-shirt and it's like minus plenty outside. So I have another eight-hour delay, well, eight-hour wait for, for a flight back to Manchester from Chicago, but it was that cold I couldn't even leave the airport. But it, it turned out good in the end because I think that day we beat York 7-0. So that, that were a good trip back. But I've done a few like that. On I used to work in Tenerife a lot and... It, I went into the same routine. I used to fly home, dinner time flight on a Friday with Monarch, get back into Manchester at tea time, watch football on Saturday where, wherever we were in the country, and then Sunday morning I'd go back to Tenerife again, and that went on for months and months and months, did that one. Uh, I've, met, I've, met, I've, I've come across not necessarily Burnley fans I've met abroad, but I've, I've met quite a lot of, um, of interesting people on my travels over the years. Um, I once ran into Mr Spielberg, he was sat on the next table to me having a meal and people kept coming up next to our table and taking photos and me being a bit naive, caught waitress over and said, why are these people taking photos of me on my table? And then she politely explained, he was looking across my table to the next table and taking photos of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's been one or two, one ninety. Uh, Trying to think of year when we went to um, went watching England in China and Hong Kong, and we were all using the same flights from internal flights from Beijing down to Hong Kong, and we had Burnley shirts on, and uh, Doug Ellis came up to us, who were then chairman at, at, F at England team set up, I think it were. And he came up talking to us, but I think he'd only come up talking to us because he'd seen Claret and Blue and thought we were Villa fans. And it weren't until he got up and, and talked to us and he realised we were Burnley fans. But we had a good, good chat and a good natter, and all players in them days intermixed with all supporters and, and sat and talked to them. But having said that, there were only a few of us in, in them days out that far away from home. But there was um, Beardsley, Gascoigne, Shearer, people like that, uh, McManaman, and, and they did, they, they would speak and they'd sign autographs. There were no, um, not as much edge to them as, shall we say, there is in, in this day and age. I think there's lots of them think they superstars now and they don't want to speak to the common or garden football fan anymore. <laughs>